Morning everybody. Uh, this is the following morning, 12 hours later, and I'm just having a look at my handiwork. Uh, there was a lot of deep strokes in it when we left last night, and I'm pleased to say that uh, the paint has done what I thought it might do, and that is sink into the primer, uh, and it's now got a nice even surface. So for the first coat, uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. I have noticed that there's lots of little um, dust speckles and things, which is only to be expected. This warehouse that I'm in is not clean by any standards, and I'm not looking for absolute perfection, but I think once we get it wet and dried uh, in another 24 hours time, because I'm gonna leave it 48 hours to harden, it feels a little bit uh, soft uh, to touch. Um, then we'll be able to get rid of uh, a few of those. A few midges have stuck on it and what have you. So we'll just have a wander down the boat uh, and have a look at the rest of it. It looks pretty even all the way along. Uh, I have noticed the odd little ripple. Uh, there's no large drip marks, which I'm pleased to, uh, pleased to say. Uh, I did do a secondary coat in, in between, separate with just a brush because there's going to be a nice piece of teak. In fact, I'll show you what that teak looks like at the end um, on it. But uh, yeah, no, I'm pleased. You can see a lot of sanding marks through into the primer, which, you know, uh, I'm expecting to see. And I will probably think that as I put the next coat on and I'll see how that is before I decide to put either a third coat on or not, to see what the sort of finish is. But overall, the gloss has, I'm, I'm really happy with. Now we've got to a point here where 12 hours ago you would have seen me got to about here and we've realised that as we were moving the camera further round we must have switched it off and you probably would have caught me continuing along here. We didn't realise that until uh, producer John had a look at it last night. So uh, that bit, I can assure you I didn't headbutt it or make a big gouge out of it. We just missed it off. So uh, there we are. But all in all, I think that's probably the worst section. We might as well show warts and all. I've got a little tiny bit of a, uh, a ripple there, which I'm, I can confidently flat out. Uh, and I think I remember mentioning I had a dry line there and I can still see that. That will flatten out. And I've got a lot of dust splatter here, which I think has probably come from the, uh, the door when we left it open, but we needed the light just to to, just to show um, what it looks like. Uh, what I didn't film is after um, John had gone, I did the other side, and uh, I don't know whether that will show. Should we show it, John? Have a look. Yeah, come round. <clears throat> I'm actually quite pleased about this side because it was enclosed, as you can see, very similar to the other side. But to me, this feels... I don't know, it looks a bit more glossy. I don't know why it's why that is the case. I did shut the door last night and uh, it wasn't the best sort of lighting. Uh, but I think this has probably turned out the better of the two sides. Um, I can't see any ripples. It feels a lot smoother. Um, and I don't feel like there's a, as half as much dust uh, been attracted to this side. So, yeah. I'm quite pleased about this. I can't, uh, I've not looked down here actually. I've looked for some ripples. Can't see any. Probably a few there where I've started and uh, started off and finished. You can see there where I've gone to that. I can see a few light and dark, so I've not obviously put enough paint on. Uh, but it was tricky. I couldn't really see very much. Uh, but it's still the first coat. All in all, I'm happy. I, don't, I haven't got any drip marks around there. I don't think, no, that's fine. Uh, these holes, by the way, are vents allowing airflow for the engine, so um, uh, they're going to be stained, but they'll have a nice chrome piece over the top of it. Uh, but yeah, no. The only place I haven't done is the uh, the rear of the boat. I haven't, done, I haven't touched that. It is in primer, but... Uh, I do need to set up some proper lighting because I just can't see anything at that side, but I'm not overly bothered. But yeah, I think this looks pretty good. What do you think, John? I think you need to show them the teak. Oh yeah. 
But what do you think of this? Very good. Yeah? Because you haven't seen this. And I think it is because the door was closed. I think it is as well. Because there's you definitely the a dust. blast. Yeah, it's, it's a lot smoother, isn't it? Right, so this is an old piece of uh, teak that I ripped off the boat. And I've just given it a quick sand and I've just used some Danish oil just to, just to see what it looks like on the side. So that, my friends, is what it's the overall effect I'm looking for. I think that looks really nice with that blue. Looks regal, wouldn't you say? And there, obviously there's going to be a lower section that's replicated there. But that, surprisingly, is going to be below the water line because when, uh, when we pulled the boat out of the water, the water was up to about here. So uh, it's not going to be uh, much of that you're going to see, I don't think. And then, of course, that is going to be uh, coloured. For some reason, that seems to be a different colour to this, but I think the new pieces that I've got are very similar to that. That's definitely not teak. Uh, that's another material. It looks a bit like, a, a, I don't know, it looks like oak, but I can't be sure what it is. Uh, but anyway, it gives you a good idea what the colour's going to be like and the combination of colours. Um, we, we were deciding what we were going to do with this colour uh, and the top section, uh, which I think we'll discuss at a later date, um, because I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that alone. I've got a couple of filling jobs to do uh, up on the top of here, which was the last job before uh, I started on the hull. And then I think I'm going to brave this. I've been putting this job off for so long uh, because my back isn't brilliant at all. And I'm going to have to rig up some form of wheeled uh, thing that I can lie on and scrape, scrape off the hull. Um, because there's years and years with the uh, anti-fouling on there. I can see multiple colours down to the gel coat, there's the gel coat. We've got a grey on top of that, then we've got a green. Uh, we've got a darker green, and then we've got uh, multiple reds on top of that. So we've got quite a few years with on there. Uh, as for the, um, the, the dreaded osmosis that um, boats uh, made of fiberglass uh, get, I am not so sure yet. Um, I'm going to have a, a closer look, but uh, I think because this boat has been out of the water for a good three years, uh, I think uh, this boat has dried out quite nicely. Uh, so we'll see what uh, we'll see what we've got when we st when I start stripping this hull. But I think I'm going to start doing this now that I've got this done. I mean, I've probably done it in the wrong order, but I was itching so much to get this blue on that uh, I'm uh, I'm chuffed that I've done it. I don't care if it gets dusty or whatever because I know I've got. Uh, other coats to put on so I'm going to get cracking on this now it's given me the the urge to um, get cracking on this so I think that might be uh, next week's task so that's it um, John's going to go off and do his work and uh, I think I'm going to crack on and um, do some more fiddly bits that you'll uh, which won't be that interesting I'm just going to do a patch up up there and what have you uh, with a bit of fiberglass so um, until next time, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Two, three. Welcome everybody. Um, as you can see, uh, the paint next to me isn't as glossy as the last time you saw it. Uh, and the reason for that is, is because I have used um, or are using two grades of paper to flat it down. The first one will be, the one that I used was a 120 grit, yeah, yeah, 120 grit. As you can see, I scored it with that paper, a light sanding, and you can still see my reflection with it. Now if I continued with that paper, A, it would create too many scratches, and also I would end up going through to the primer. So I went lightly over that all the way down the boat and then I went to 180 grit and I started at the front and worked my way along. Now as you can see you can't see my reflection through the top half 
which is the ideal for me is the ideal uh, texture that I want it's nice and it's got a nice flat satin finish uh, you can't see my reflection in it so there's no gloss the idea is is to get as much gloss off it as possible so then uh, the paint the next layer of paint um, will have a good uh, will have good adhesion to it so that's the finish I'm after uh, and I'm getting close to the point where um, I will achieve the same on the lower section so I'm now going to use sorry I'm going to use the 180 grit the 120 grit is the the coarser of the two I always get that mixed up so I'm going to use the 120 to achieve that finish so basically all you do is sort of squat down a bit and get parallel with the uh, with the paint and I can see it takes out the deeper scratches and they end up with a satin finish. Are you using a lot of effort to do that? Um, to be honest, I am using more effort than I, I need to, and what I'm, what I, I'm glad you pointed that out because well. really what I should do is I should wet and dry it, and um, uh, it's a it's a car method that um, uh, I used to do in the old days. I used to like doing. Uh, my father was uh, in the motor trade, and I used to do the odd paint job and what have you uh, back in the day. And wet and dry, to be honest, is the key thing. And I'm going to do that with the other side. It's just that I don't have the wet and dry paper and uh, I don't have the soapy water in the bucket. So uh, I'm going to do that with the other side to see if it improves. Because what happens is it does clog up the paper and it's difficult to uh, go over the surface. Because even though the, uh, the, the paint was put on on the Friday and we're now on the Monday, it's still quite grabby, uh, it, it still feels like it's not completely hardened up and I would imagine that it would take maybe um, four to five days for it to really get hard so maybe I'm being a bit premature with it but like I said to you before you know this is the first time I've done anything like this. I did look on YouTube um, quite, uh, quite a lot uh, over the weekend and I couldn't find, fully enough, um, any uh, videos of people that had put one coat on of this uh, this product and then flatted it off and then put a new one on so um, maybe I wasn't looking hard enough but I, I just couldn't find it so I'm actually thinking well this is what you would do with a car so this is what I'm trying to do so it might be right and it might, or it might be wrong but I think hopefully it's going to be okay so this is trial and error it is if, trial and error, yeah. If you get yeah. Um, a better finish on the other side with the wet and dry, can you come back and wet and dry this as well? So you've got both sides exactly the same. Um, I suppose so, yeah. I suppose so. Uh, I'll, I'll, find, I'll, I'll see whether... I mean, the difference between what I'm doing here and the wet and dry, uh, uh, like I know what wet and dry will look like, is whether I will completely get a flat satin finish and no little uh, areas where I can see um, uh, lower sections of where it's still glossy. So that will be the only difference. If it ends up looking like this, then I won't come back and wet and dry this. I'll just treat it like it's the same. So uh, there has been a little bit more work and it'll be interesting to see if the wet and dry actually is easier to do, uh, which I'm going to uh, do tomorrow. Um, so that's it. So I'm going to try and achieve, does that pick it up, John? That's a, that finish against flash. this. Yes. So you can still see that you there's a bit the of a gloss. Yeah. The only thing I'm thinking about is where you had that drip uh, around, the, around the water hole. Ah, well, I've already done that as uh, with the, um, the, the heavier of the two grits. Right. So uh, that's down there. I've managed to get that out. Um, so that's it. So basically, that all I'm doing now is trying to achieve the same finish as uh, up there, and I'm hoping that the camera does pick up the fact that it's now the reflections disappearing.
uh, stroke wise I, I, rather than going like that and like that I'm just going in one direction uh, because I'm hoping that uh, you know as we uh, showed the rolling and tipping the final strokes with the brush I always go that way so I'm hoping that you know if I keep everything going the same way it should be uh, it, it hopefully won't show the underneath which is what we're doing now so that's that's uh, that's that's fine I'm happy with that so we've gone from that to semi-gloss and then to this so that's that's what I'm trying to achieve uh, and I'll, I will do the other side also what I did um, is I started sanding that down ready for paint uh, that section uh, and on the other side as well I haven't I haven't done the upper section yet uh, I will be doing that this week I will be sanding that ready for its first colour uh, but I've got issues with the uh, windscreen I've still got to uh, figure out what I'm going to do with the windscreen because the the original windscreen which is underneath the boat um, a I'm struggling to find somebody to recondition it and, and I'm just debating whether I want to recondition it because it's got lots of holes in it um, or whether to make a new one um, but I haven't got to that stage so I can't really paint at this stage the upper section because I've still got to decide what I'm going to do with the uh, windscreen so that's what I wanted to show everybody today and um, I think that concludes it John so until next time we'll see you then thank you Are you going to 3 2 on me? Oh God, I've got dizzy. Right. Why am I bothering? Yeah, I know. Are you going to count me in? You're in. What? Are you yeah. doing it? Yes. You didn't get any of that in. Carry on. Are you going to count me in or just, am I just going? Go. Okay. Hi, guys, girls. Um, no, no clapping. I'm just rubbing me ass. It goes right into the microphone. You'll definitely, you'll deafen the viewer. <laughs> oh, the viewer, very funny. Oh, sure, oh. Oh, sure, we've got one. Right, okay, three, two, one. <laughs> Hi, guys, girls. Um, right. Yesterday, I spent all day sanding down this side of the hull, and I did it dry. So I used two forms of uh, sandpaper. I used fine and I used a medium and then a fine and I got what I thought was a really good uh, finish but I did say towards the end of that shoot uh, that I'm going to try wet and dry so this morning I went out for some more provisions down to um, the place where I get my paint from and I got some more paint um, and what else did I get oh I got some uh, deck grip uh, which John doesn't know about for up top here uh, what else did they get and I got some filler some more fiberglass and some wet and dry so I brought it back here and I did I started on the other side and I've done about I only got maybe six 12 inch square when I realized that it is absolutely light years better than what I did yesterday and it took me half the time so I literally stopped doing that side and I went straight back to this side and started wet and drying this so what you're seeing now is a wet and dried version of what's going to take place on the other side now the difference between this side and the other side is is that obviously I've taken more paint off than the other side uh, which you know is the first coat it's my first time doing uh, rolling and tipping so you know I'm learning like uh, like anybody else would I would suppose you've got to try these things but I'm so pleased that I found this wet and dry uh, way of 
uh, sanding down because oh, it's so smooth and flat. It's going to be brilliant for the next coat. So basically, uh, what I've done is I've got a little bucket. Uh, soap suds, you can use just household um, liquids, fairy liquid or whatever. Uh, I've got my wet and dry. Now the actual grade of the sandpaper I'm using is, I think that one's an 800 grade. So that, uh, basically, uh, what you would use when you were, if you were spraying and, and, and repairing a car. Uh, so that's what I've used. So you literally get soapy water, you wet the area, preferably with a sponge and not your hand, and then you basically keep your, the secret is keep your paper wet and literally just do that. You can feel it going over so smoothly. And then when you finish, it's such a nice, flat, um, sort of satin finish. It's hard to describe when you're dealing with a camera, but if I dry it off a bit, you get a lovely matte finish. Now, that is going to be great for me. So from now on, I'm not going to do any dry sanding. I'm going to be wet and drying. Uh, I'm going to be doing the wet system because by far to me that's I'm going to achieve the best uh, results so I thought that would be the best thing to get it on camera I rung John up said John can you come down we need to do this uh, and here we are so there we are so the next procedure is you're going to have to because you've done this side of the boat I've done it and you can have see to there's a lot of milkiness of all the that uh, residue of residue so what i've done is i've got some um Thank i you. bought this from a diy store and uh, i've just put some white spirit in there and basically what i'm going to do excuse me a second is i've got some cheap toweling absorbent toweling paper toweling and i'm basically going to go over it like so take off this as you can see that's all dried onto the surface so if you go along here to match up to this yeah okay just to get it clean I mean, when it comes to doing the next coat, obviously I'll tack off using those tack cloths which you've already seen. But for now, just to get that residue off. Well, I can see what a difference that is. I think using a mask would be good as well. Breathing off when I see it. It's getting in my tea as well. Yeah. Anyway, for the purpose of this film, I'll just do that section there. So you can see it drying off. And wow. Well, I don't know whether the camera can pick up, but there's hardly any uh, gloss left. I mean, all these light patches that you can see are from the previous time I sanded down. On this side here, there's none of that. I've managed to achieve a flat finish in a nanoseconds time compared to what I've done on this side. So to me, I feel like I've wasted a, a whole day doing that side when I think this will take me half the time, if that, to be honest. You can see all the, all the residue comes off on these towels. So yeah, I thought I'd share that with you. So in my personal opinion, I would prefer the wet and dry. Uh, it's obviously down to you whether you want to uh, do that. But uh, if you want the sort of finish that I'm hoping we're going to get, and you will see that in due course, um, 
that certainly is a really great key for the next uh, for the next pot of paint. So there we have it. Can't think of anything else, John. Can you? Yeah, sign off. Okay. Thank you, and see you later.